pastime of, of sort of drawing imaginary control panels inspired the work you just saw, which was widely passed around on the internet. As you'll see, many of my own projects have a kind of similar process where, as I'm gradually looking back into my own past, I see things that happened to me as, as a child, childhood experiences that informed my later research. We'll see this kind of cycle again, and I wonder if these kinds of abiding childhood impressions last with any of you guys. So today I'd like to talk about my own practice in media arts. It's going to be a, a bit of a, of a sort of two-part talk. I'll talk about some older work which is more involved with um, sort of formal issues in audiovisual interaction and uh, information visualization and more recent work which deals with critical fabrication. Some core concerns I have are the aesthetics of interaction with data towards provocative examples expanding our vocabulary of action. And what this could mean is, is enabling people to have new kinds of experiences with the kinds of technologies that, that, that make these kinds of things possible. And allowing people to discover their potential as creative agents, specifically through play and playful techniques. So I use a, a variety of different modes of practice to do this. One is to think about, I, I sort of think about my work lying along these three axes. And uh, generally, is one I believe is fortunate if, as a designer or an artist, one can accomplish uh, two out of three of these. Uh, but this is where I tend to locate myself. Um, uh, if if the uh, the top of the triangle is is are, are things that are useful, I'm about as far away from that as can be. The the good news, um, or the bad news, perhaps, is that that's where all the money is. Um, so there's not a lot of money often in the kind of work that I do. The great news is that since that's where all the money is, it's really well trammeled over there. And on the opposite side of the triangle, it's a wide open field. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity to explore new ways and new kinds of things to make uh, on that other side. Um, in the realm of working with computers, um, I try to strike a balance between doing it myself and doing it with others. Um, in, my, in my students, as I mentioned, I, inf I enforce this idea that everyone, including people from arts backgrounds or, or, or traditional fine arts backgrounds, should write code. It is an important 21st century skill. And yet, in so many projects today, it's necessary for teams of people to work together, like films and things like that, where it's simply impossible otherwise to, um, to not do it with others if you want to achieve what you want. But this is a balance, and I try to be someone who can DIY as a kind of a hybrid. Here in a university context, um, one is often asked, what does arts research mean? And I situate arts research on a spectrum between producing knowledge and influencing culture. Producing knowledge would mean, for example, writing papers that contain reproducible techniques for, for sharing a new discovery. Influencing culture means making sublime examples that get passed around on the internet and inspire yet other works that get mixed up and mashed up and chopped up and reinterpreted by others in ways I can't even predict. So, to measure influence, we, we say, well, how has your work been reinterpreted? And how, how, 